the heavyweight bout. Once again, we're getting the heavyweight <laughs> bout in the, the three slot on the main card. <sighs> Low level again. Augusto Sakai taking on Dante Mays. Slight dog money on Dante Mays, plus 115. Augusto Sakai coming off four KO losses. Sits at the favorite, minus 115. Over under, one and a half rounds. Overs minus 151. Under plus 151. Uh, I mean, for a guy that's coming off of four straight knockouts, I would expect him to be severely undervalued, and I would like to back him. Um, but in this scenario, it is Augusto Sakai who has come off four straight knockouts, and that is you have to have some big balls to back a guy coming off four straight knockouts. But the silver lining in this is the opponent's are as powerful as they come. Like, we don't need to to beat around it there. I mean, Sergey Spivak, not the most powerful, I, I will say that. But, I mean, he, his path to victory there was picking him up, taking him down, you know, Sakai getting back to his feet and then go, getting down again. Just basically what he did to Derek Lewis, but for a longer period of time and a lot more shots. So he went through the ring with Sergey Spivak Gets knocked out by Tai Tuivasa in the second round. That was pretty nasty. Jarzinho Rosenstrike knocks him out in the first round, at the end of the first round, and then uh, loses in the fifth round to Alistair Overeem by a ground to pound. But before that, let's look at it, the the UFC opponents before that. Blagoy Ivanov wins a split decision, knocks out Martian Taburo, split decision win over Andre Arlovsky, and a win uh round three knockout over chase sherman so he beats you know the lower level heavyweights barely barely granted it was you know 2019 2020 but uh i mean he just he obviously can't hang with the, the upper level heavyweights but Dante mays is no upper level heavyweight Dante mays struggles with you know the lowest of level of heavyweights the guy's got a great frame. I mean, he's 6'6", 81-inch reach. He looks great on paper. But uh, comes in as the favorite against um, Hamdi Abdel Wahab and loses. They chalk it up as a no contest because uh, Hamdi was on the sauce. Jo- he gets a, a win over Josh Parisian. We talked about him last week. It's, it is what it is. The guy can get take down, taken down by you know, my grandma. But uh, Dante Mays looked like a D1 wrestler in that one. He had like six takedowns. Gets a, a win over Roque Martinez. Um, yeah, who the hell knows who Roque Martinez is at, at this yeah. point? You know, like he went 0-3 in the UFC. It's not in the UFC more for a reason. Loses to Rodrigo Nascimento. Loses to Ciro Gan in his debut. So, sure, he's beating... Uh, you know, the, the bottom level of the UFC heavyweights, but that's really nothing to write home about. Sakai beat him too. So, I mean, are these guys like the same level somewhat? We talked about it in the recap. After, you know, the 12 best heavyweights, it pretty much drops off. <sighs> Sakai, he needs a win bad. He needs a win very bad. For Dante Mays, probably needs a win, but, you know, he could probably afford another loss. He's, you know, two and... 2-0-0 oh, no, with a no contest in his last three. Um, Sakai just needs a win. He has decent stand-up. He just he struggles severely off of his back if he gets taken down in this fight. If Dante Mays comes out and shows his wrestling like he did against Parisian, it might be a tough fight for Sakai. But the thing for, for Mays, he just doesn't have a lot of finishing ability, not a ton of power. He's long. He'll wrestle. Uh, but I just I don't really doubt his or I doubt his ability to like do that against anyone that's not Josh Parisian uh much more fleet of foot like much more fleet of foot in his striking a lot more kicks it's this is just as greasy as it gets like yeah I, I don't even know who I would take for my pick like it's probably dogger pass I mean it's it's heavyweights but I I, I can't get to Dante Mays even yeah, if he was like plus two hundred, I'd I'd feel much better about it. But uh, I don't know. I mean, it kind of seems like the value's on Sakai. 
being that he's coming off four straight losses. I mean, and he was a favorite in, in a good amount of those. Um, or he was, he was close to a favorite. He's pretty close in the odds with Tai Tuivasa. It's pretty much even there. Pretty much even with Rosenstrike. He's a slight dog against Overeem. And then uh, he was a, a much bigger dog against Spivak, but that's because Spivak is a big wrestler, and, and uh, they knew he'd take him down. So what are your thoughts? I don't know. Maybe you can sway me some way. I'm going to try because you already know I'm taking Dante Mays as my pick. We talked a little earlier. But I'm looking at Augusto Sakai's record right now. And when he came into the UFC, Chase Sherman, Andre Arlovsky, Martian Tybura, and Blahoy Ivanov are his four wins in a row. Two of those by split decision to Blahoy Ivanov and Andre Arlovsky, which was, I guess, coming up on four years now, uh, four years ago. So let's say those roles are reversed. He gets those two split decision losses. He would then be two and six in the UFC. And I just can't. A guy that's two and six in the UFC and has been knocked out in his last four fights. I just can't get to put my money on him at all just because you know it only takes one big shot to put him down. Like you said, Dontel Mays hasn't shown that he's this big, powerful striker by any means. But, I mean, how how affected is Augusto Sakai from those four losses and the damage he's taken? I mean, he's fighting some heavy hitters in Tai Tuivasa, Jarzinho, and Alistair Overeem. Um, but, I mean, you're, you're not going out there convincingly beating Blahoy Ivanov. You're not convincingly beating an older Andre Arlovsky. You're beating Martian Tibura, who we saw against Blahoy in his last fight, and Martian's just no finishing ability at all. Um, doesn't hit hard, weird striking that's not that effective. And then you're knocking out Chase Sherman, who has some of the most losses on the, in UFC history. So I just can't get to Augusta Sakai. I think as an underdog here, Dontel Mays, you just, if you are going to play him, you just got to hope that he comes in there, um, uses that size and reach to not get himself in too much danger because Augusto Sakai, I mean, he does have, he does hold power. He can hit you. Um, but if you can close the distance and just clinch up with him and do some work in close and possibly drag him down to the ground. I mean, I just don't think he has much to offer. I think Dontel Mays, um, his kind of downfall is going to be against guys with good jujitsu at that level. And, you know, they're going to control him and, and find a finish that way. But Augusto Sakai offers none of that. So, I've got to lean the dog here. And I think as the week goes on, I think Augusto Sakai will flip and he'll actually be the underdog. So if you are waiting and you are going to bet on Sakai, I think you could hold off until closer to the fight. I think people are going to start looking into this more. They're going to start seeing that record. And uh, I think people are going to have more confidence in Dontel Mays just because of recency bias, because he is coming off of two wins in a row, regardless of the Hamdi fight. Um, and Hamdi's a big, strong dude who, you know, wasn't, I'm pretty sure he was a, was he like an Olympic wrestler or? Uh, yeah, it was a, what, what where is he from, from or something? He's, he's from, a, he's from like Iran or something, isn't he? Egypt. Egypt. He's from Egypt. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. Yeah. And just short and huge, no neck at all. Just <laughs> all, I mean, all bulk. And he was able to beat him. Um, but yeah, man, I it, it, this is a dicey one for sure. It always is at this level in the heavyweights. Um, I mean, we've been talking for the last couple of weeks. The heavyweight division is so shallow right now, and yeah. this is not going to be too high a level of a fight. But I'm going to lean the underdog for sure. I think I think Dontel Mays just has more um, to offer right now at this point in their careers. Like I said, that that big four fight losing streak all by knockout just sticks out to me like a sore thumb. So I'm going to have to go with my instinct and just take uh, take Dontel Mays here. I will say, Augusto Sakai looks like he's in much better shape on Instagram. But if we uh, we judge- said that about William Knight, yeah, too. if we judge people on Instagram, <laughs> that's probably not a good. He might go out there and not even throw a punch. Yeah, so, there's that. 